Değerli Büyükelçiler, Değerli Büyükelçiler, Esteemed diplomats, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity and greet you with great respect. As it is known, UNESCO declared 2021 as the year of Yunus Emre. The organization has also made the same announcement and declaration in 1991, and this serves as an indication that Yunus Emre is an important name, not on only for Anatolia, which is his own cultural geography, but also for Turkey, for the whole world, and for the entire humanity. And for this reason, it is important to find out about these general universal messages that Yunus Emre was sending both in his own country and in the whole world and to raise the awareness and increase the public opinion. This was declared for this purpose. And of course, a name that declares that, I mean, a name that has have that importance, of course, needs to be studied. We need to find out where does it, this importance come from, what is the domain, what geographies did it reach, and what kind of messages did it give to humanity. To understand that, you must first look at the root, because this is a call. It was a person and the writer of a call, call, and he said, I didn't come for a fight, I came to make friends and I make to bring bridges about hearts and love. This short position actually summarizes in short his mission and what kind of call he came with and what kind of events of this age are important. According to our historical information, Yunus Emre lived in the last quarter of the 13th century and the first quarter of the 14th century, which means that the end of the 13th century and and rather the beginning of the 14th century. When we look at this time, we see the important events were taking place in two days Turkey, then Anatolian geography. And the most important of those, of course, is the, the, raid, the Mongolian raids that have been going on for a long time and directed from east to the west. Mongols, well, they came to Anatolia from their own geography and, and occupied and invaded these locations. Of course, it is obvious what kind of results the invasion lead to. And first of all, you know, this in general, the political upheaval that is happening is a disruption of the state order. And accordingly, it is is the disappearance of love, trust, unity, peace, and all values among people, one by one. So we are talking about an area of a complete chaos. As a matter of fact, the Seljuk state was destroyed and the Turks in Anatolia were left without a state. Thereupon, principalities of Beyliks and Turkish emerged and the general Turkish unity was divided into pieces. In this very complex process, a mixed atmosphere of thought and belief also emerged because within the framework of these conditions, there could not be a proper event and, and uh, the migrations and people and groups who adopted all kinds of ideas came from east to west. Anatolia experienced therefore a complete chaos. On the other hand, in terms of population, there are well, we see predominantly Turks here, but on the other hand, people of other nationalities, such as Greeks and Armenians, also live there. In other words, it presents a mixed geographical view in the general sense. In this kind of process and situation, what does a human being is supposed to do? It wants to compile and regroup and re-establish its unity and well-being. But for this, the, the leader, the, there is importance, of course, to have a leader who can guide the people. There. And Yunus Emre emerged as such a leader. He, likewise, also experienced all the troubles of his age as an individual. He saw the problems and sought solutions to them. But in order to find a solution, the person had to educate himself, develop it himself, and understand his age and events around that. In this sense, we see that he first received an education in Madrasa and then went through a mystical education.
the great mystic what, whom we call Yunus Emre also Tabtuk Emre is a real person whom, who made him this person out of himself while he was studying science on one hand he also appears here as someone who has done some mental training on seeing and understanding the problems of the geography he lived in and how to solve those issues after completing his education here, he was sent to Anatolia by his teacher because people needed to be informed and enlightened about what was going on. Turkish was in Anatolia in the West was an oral language and there was no written literary language yet. Yunus Emre expressed his thoughts to people through his poems. These cities and this, uh, these poems indeed, they were learned by people living in the whole Anatolian geography by spreading from language to language, from tongue to tongue, from ear to ear. What was Yunus Emre talking about in these poems? It was expressing the situation, as you see, there's a fight, there's a turmoil, and now I am as a human being, I didn't come here for a new turmoil, for a new, for new claims and new fights. My job is love. I came here for this, for passion, because love is the most needed answer in this age. In the age where the war, hatred, enmity, separation and marginalization prevail, we need love. The understanding of love is an understanding that originates from Yunus Emre's understanding of religion and mysticism. In particular, Sufism appears as a philosophy of love in the Islamic believe. Moreover, this philosophy is not just, let's say, for the Turkish or the Muslim communities, it is also addressed to the entire humanity. In one of his poems, he says that the, this world is one and we need to look at this through the window of love without subjecting people to color, language, or religion, or race. There are also ontological reasons for this view. This is according to the Sufism. Every creature that is created carries a, an essence, a message. It carries something with love and who loves God and has to love people who can, can carry his essence and treat them to the other people with tolerance and regard them as brothers. This is such an understanding and a concept that those of the same religion are religious brothers, those of the same blood are blood brothers, but regardless of blood and religion, it is a human being. It means that we have a fraternity, a brotherhood with him in this creation. This is what we want to be told in his, in, in his insistence that the public realm and the world is one. We consider all humanity and all people as brothers. What we need in establishing this climate of brotherhood is to love and understand each other not to consider our differences as a reason for separation or enmity. On the contrary, seeing it as an enrichment. Yes, this call is really a call for people living in Anatolia at that time to find a cure for their problems and a solution to their disease. And that is important. Yunus Emre, in that respect, has tried to explain, to convey and deliver this message and this call to people by visiting many cities of Anatolia and even going to the lands of Azerbaijan for nearly 30 years. This word has been accepted by its interlocutors because it comes from a sincere time, from a sincere heart and expresses the feelings and thoughts that people need. Thus, the voices of this unity began to rise again in Anatolia, which was torn apart, and the voices of let's be friends and brothers in this geography has appeared in the area where before hostility prevailed. In other words, people started to take steps towards collecting themselves and recovering. As a result, those scattered 
Turkish principalities united under the leadership of Osman Bey and established an Ottoman state, which is known as one of the longest-lived states in world history. On the other hand, with Yunus poetry and language transforming Turkish into a written language of literature, works in the sense of literature and culture began to be produced in this geography and a movement of thought and belief developed. This leads us to the conclusion that the structure of the Ottoman state which was established was not only a political structure, but also a civilization. When we look at the founding philosophy of the Ottoman Empire, we see that Yunus Emre's unifying efforts and understanding of love was very efficient and effective. The Ottomans left everyone to be free in their language, religion and lifestyle in this colorful geography where people from other nations and religions and races also live together. It has likewise ensured that they live in safety within the legal rules of the state. And here I would like to again once again emphasize that Yunus Emre played a major role in the formation of this important understanding. And Yunus Emre has never been forgotten since those days. With his poems and his thoughts, he is a national Turkish poet. But as I mentioned at the beginning, this feature of being a national name did not remain with its own geography only. It was not limited to that because the philosophy and understanding he put forward is an understanding that appeals to all people. And he has also become a universal personality. Of course, such a personality well, could not be expected from other cultures, other geographies to be indifferent. Of course, other cultures regard him as such. And as a matter of fact, uh, in, during the times of the Mehmed the Conqueror, a, pr a prisoner named George was taken as a prisoner by the Turks during the reign of the Mehmed the Conqueror. He meets the dervishes who read the Yunus Emre poems in the prison. He likes his words, his tongues and poems very much. He takes a note and later of his life in captivity, he returned to his country. He published them as a part of the book that he prepared. Those, thus, Europe actually finds the opportunity to, find, to, more, to learn more about Yunus Emre in the 15th century. But recognition in a broader sense of the word occurs mostly in the 19th century. This century is a century in which Western Orientalism made intensive studies on Eastern cultures. While many Western scientists were examining the Eastern conception and the religion of Islam, mysticism, Sufism, they encountered the name Yunus Emre as well as a great name such as Muhyid Arabi and Mevlana and began to translate his thoughts into Western languages. In other words, Yunus Emre is a now well-known name in the West, although not on the scale of Mevlana or Ibn Arabi. He is well known still. Suppose it is not recognized, but I would like to emphasize here that it's a name that needs to be recognized. The reason is this. The sufferings experienced in Anatolia, the traumas experienced in Anatolia in the 13th century, both political, religious, cultural and, and other troubles, and most importantly the war, of course, the enmity that was between the people, they did already did not ceased to exist in that era. The, such problems continue to be, to be present from time to time, but at such time the people who guided others, they were uh, philosophers, clergy, intellectuals, poets and writers. That is why their call is a call that appeals to everyone, to every period likewise. When we look at the conditions of today's age, the landscape of the world is not much different from the age in which Yunus Emre lived. Yes, the world has changed a lot. 
It has come to a very advanced point in terms of science and technology, but in return, the whole humanity is experiencing a crisis of values, a moral problem that persists. And everyone is faced with very serious problems because they cannot answer the questions about the meaning of life. First of all, these are the wars going on here and there in the world, just like in that era. On the other hand, there is an income inequality. In one part of the world, people are dying, get sick, and in some other places, these people also die of hunger, they deprived of a sip of water and a sip of bread. Again, there are hostilities between states, fueled for one reason or another. It is really difficult to say that the philosophies of the last age have found solutions to these problems and challenges. The entire world humanity in the, in the purpose of finding and seeking to find the reason, the purpose of being a human being, it really seeks solutions to the problems it faces in terms of relationship between states, relationship between people, economic activities and social activities. And in this process of seeking a solution, we see that Yunus Emre is a mystic who, with his thoughts, brings a solution to the people of his age, where, whether they are Eastern or Western. In this respect, it is useful to remind again that the most prominent of his fundamental ideas are this. In order to ensure the unity of the people, in a poem he says, let's meet, let's make things easy, let's love, let's be loved, the world will not be left to anyone. It is a very important call in this poem. The philosophy of love is here and now. It also becomes easier to understand why the humanist movement emerged in the West, because the, these fights, the struggles within the West itself lie in the owners of this movement. And as a solution to this, Western humanism has put forward this idea. Many philosophers formed this movement and presented it to humanity as a new understanding of philosophy. Here, Yunus Emre created a humanist movement in his own geography. And beyond any doubt, there are some different points in this understanding that as there are people of different beliefs and cultures. But when we look at the common points and shared values, we see this human is a valuable asset. He is a human being. He is superior and he is blessed and his heart is bestowed upon his, this creation. So it is a beginning that should we have, you know, in the, and have the order in the world. But it's not possible to do this immediately. If we can uh, buy something with our values, if we can complete the personal development and become mature, a virtuous person, we can guide others and know the light. That is what is needed. And this is possible if human beings give importance to their hearts as much as their minds. Therefore, in Yunus Emre's philosophy and his mystical understanding, the human body gains value with heart, not with a, with a, be with a being. If you have broken your heart once, it's not a prayer to perform. And the understanding that we have 72 nations do not come, it doesn't help and it comes across as an expression that shows a value it gives to the people in this sense in a wonderful way and of course we live in different nations and states and on earth and that is expressed for example the 72 nations that is mentioned this means multiplicity it also says that if you are let's say religious person and you are a person of faith you believe in God, you love Him. 
ister İngiliz olsun, ister Fransız, ister Whether it is English, ister French, kişi, Arab, Chinese, 72 nations, you need to look at them with all with the same approach. This is the eye, this is the approach that you have, the approach of a human being. If someone who doesn't look at these 20, 72 nations in the same way, even if he finishes the most important universities, if he, let's say, bits experts in all kinds of sciences, he's not really a human. He is seen as a rebel. And in other words, he creates a rebel. And he explains his philosophy once again. He says that we are focusing on the poems and the Gawa philosophy, the solution is this in the end, in Yunus philosophy, in the mysticism and humanism coined by Yunus. A human being is a valuable being, is an important and this important value that will make us human is a love. If we can add love as an understanding first to our hearts and then to our lives, we can both live and in peace with ourselves and consider all people as brothers, regardless of nationality, geography or faith. Then the world becomes a place full of beauties. This is what we call an ideal country for humanity. It should be available there for all of us. Here, Yunus expressed this ideal in his own person and in terms of the meaning it carries. This ideal continues to preserve its value and importance today. Thank you very much for your attention.